is Brian Kelly. Some individual performances have already been uh, um, highlighted. Um, SEC um, uh, accolades, uh, obviously, uh, you guys are aware of. Um, Jay Ward, B.J. Ojolari, uh, defensive back and defensive lineman player of the week in the SEC. We're proud of their accomplishments and, and like to note those uh, accordingly when um, those kinds of uh, performances are, are uh, highlighted. It's very difficult to, to be a player of the week in this conference, and uh, we like to give them uh, due notice uh, when, when there are outstanding performances like that. Um, you know, as a team, obviously, uh, any victory in the SEC is a, is a great victory. Um, you know, the way we uh, came back in the second half, um, I think the overall performance from our, from our defense from start to finish was uh, was outstanding. And then uh, we rallied offensively and, and executed much better um, down the stretch. Um, we'll look to... Uh, certainly improve on, on the offensive performance and its consistency for four quarters uh, and, and continue to work on um, consistency in the special teams game. But, you know, I really liked the, I think, physically and, and mentally uh, how our guys stayed with it the entire game. You know, the sense on the sideline for me was really good uh, that our team was at no time um, anxious, panicking, didn't believe that they were going to uh, find a way to win the football game. So that's a, you know, it's a very good trait to have moving forward, and um, we'll look to build on that as we move forward. Now, uh, getting another home game, um, excited to be, uh, you know, in Tiger Stadium again uh, for a third consecutive week. But now we have to look towards. Um, persistence and consistency. Looking at a, a football team now that, that has a chance to be a good team, you have to have consistency. And that means coming back after a good win and putting together a complete performance. And so that's, that is mental and physical, um, and that is in how they prepare. So we start that preparation today. We work through the week. Um, our expectations and our standards are – uh, that we have a great week of preparation, uh, regardless of who our competition is, uh, whether it's an SEC competition or not. Um, we need to be consistent in what we're doing. And that will be the challenge this week. Uh, the maturity will be on display in terms of how mature we are as a football team and can we handle success. We had some success this weekend. How do we handle it this week in our preparation? Um, New Mexico is, is a challenge. Um, you know, we, we had uh, Zach Arnett's defense and, and uh, Mike Leach's team this weekend, and uh, that defense is, is, a, is a handful. We saw it. Mississippi State was difficult um, to handle, especially in the first half. They keep you off balance, and um, Zach came from the Rocky Long tree, and uh, we go against a Rocky Long defense uh, this weekend. It is a, a good defense, and they have caused uh, people fits. Um, they're, uh, they're a defense that um, is in structure, has some similarities. Um, they're allowing 13 and a half points per game. Um, you know, third down, they're outstanding. I think they're fifth in the country. Um, they forced seven turnovers this past weekend, seven. Um, so you can, you can imagine, um, you know, I think top five in the country in terms of, uh, you know, forcing turnovers. So this is a defense that will – uh, give you problems. If you're not executing at a high level, um, they'll they'll turn this game into a, a close game. Um, there's no doubt about that. Offensively, uh, and again, you know, obviously, um, head coach uh, Danny Gonzalez does a really good job. He's he's a, a noted offensive uh, mind. Uh, he's always been really good uh, as a play caller, and uh, they're uh, you know it's a pistol. Um, Midline option, um, offense, ball control. Um, you know they've got some talented players on the perimeter, um, and it's one where you know obviously they're playing, um, you know obviously good defense and and uh, opportuni very opportunistic on the offensive side of the ball. So um, Kendrick is the quarterback from Kansas. He transferred in, um, athletic, and we'll have to do a really good job with our option. Uh, responsibilities. Um, 
but again, I, I, I think, as I mentioned, um, a lot of this is, is in our preparation and consistency and, and how we handle things uh, going into this weekend. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Yeah, uh, hey, Coach. Uh, Glenn West with Go247. Uh, you, you talked about the conditioning of your team through four quarters on Saturday. I'm just curious, is, that, is this kind of the point in the season where that really gets to show just how good of conditioning you guys are in and just what does that look like in season in terms of keeping those guys as physically healthy, I guess, uh, you know, when you get to SEC play? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's how you practice. Um, we don't condition during practice or after practice, so it's, it's a matter of, you know, managing the practice structure itself that, that you are getting your team to a workload that the games become easier. And, and then you start to see that in the, in the third and fourth quarter where you can wear down your opponents. You know, we're weight training during the season. Um, and it's not a maintenance program. It's a program that, you know, we're not putting our guys in a compromising position where they've got too much weight on the bar. But, you know, we're being powerful with, with our weight training and, and really intentional about, you know, trying to get our guys stronger during the season. So we want to continue to add strength. We want to continue to condition our players but also with an eye towards, you know, making sure that their workload is such that um, they can be their best on Saturday. Hey, Brian. Um, first off, we didn't get a check last week on Anthony Bradford's status. Just want to see where he's at. But also with the tempo stuff, I mean, is it as simple as, hey, tempo's working, play tempo? Or is there other considerations as to why maybe, you know, you pick your spots and haven't done it in the first half as much? Uh, Anthony is, uh, is activated for this week. Um, He's in a competitive situation with, uh, you know, the guard position, um, but certainly we'll 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 have an opportunity to to earn playing time this week. Um, yeah, it's not as simple as just say, hey, let's go tempo, and and all of our problems have been erased. Um, you know, I, I think I I I kind of alluded to some of them. You know, having three different, you know, offensive line combinations, you know, require a lot of communication. Um, you know, we had eight penalties. Six of them were unforced, um, and five of them were communication errors. So we've got to clean up communication, uh, cadence, rhythm. Um, and so tempo t takes some of that out of, you know, um, the mix, so to speak, and that you can just go fast and not have to, um, you know, worry about it. I think at times um, we have to think in terms of um, – correcting the gross errors instead of trying to correct everything at the line of scrimmage. Um, we've been a little bit maybe, um, you know, too detailed, uh, and we just got to play. And, and then when you play a faster pace, there are some things you just can't account for. And I think maybe we've overcoached it a little bit, um, and I think we're trying to find our sweet spot as to, you know, what are the things that we just have to live with and really do a good job of getting the ball out of our hands. Um, what are your assessments of Jaden so far this year? You were very specific in the post game about opening up. How does he take that coaching in the game during the week, et cetera, and how does he take it to the field? Yeah, he's he's. I I, I love coaching somebody that is open to um, the dialogue uh, during the game. Uh, you can have conversations with him during the game, and he can make the corrections. Uh, in game, some can't, and so you just don't even try to do those things. Um, but you know, Coach Sloan is is talking much more conceptual. I'm trying to deal with some technical things, you know, on the sideline because sometimes I don't have the big conceptual picture from the sideline. Um, so, you know, he's handling both ends of that. You know, where you know, uh, Coach Sloan is talking about some concepts and some some different looks and I'm trying to really focus on some specific things and um, you know I think that that's worked out pretty good and he handles both of those conversations really well. Right, on your left. Uh, how did Emory Jones do in his first start? Are you still rotating on the offensive line? Uh, I would say that um, he exceeded expectations. Um, look you know he's He's not going to be perfect, um, but he's active. Um, he's got great feet, and um, he is a great open field tackler. <laughs> Brian, 
uh, Will Snyder from The Advocate. You talked about this a little bit after the game in terms of how Kayshawn getting double covered is opening things up for Malik. At the same time, do you feel like you guys need to do some different things to get Kayshawn going, or is that just going to kind of going to kind of have to maybe live with that a little bit? Yeah, I think that's a little bit of both. I mean, I, I think, I think, you know, look, this is never one-sided, right? It's never all on the player. It's never all on the coach at this level. I think you have to look at both, right? We got to look at how we can move him around and and uh, utilize his talents, and then you know he's got to continue to work hard uh, and and work on his skill set. You know, and continue to work hard in practice. So it's it's always going to be that it, it, at this level, at the next. It's always going to be on the player. It's always going to be on the coaching staff um, to work together. This is, you know, this is you know working together as a team. You know, um, is is how you get better. It's never just one side of it. So absolutely, we've got to do our job as coaches uh, to move around and be creative. And he's got to do his end of continuing to work hard um, and, and be the best uh, player he can be. Hey, Coach, here in the middle. Um, after looking at the film, what were your thoughts on some of the special teams that you had, the decisions to catch punts, uh, the punt return coverage, the kick return coverage um, late in the game? I, I know there was a hold called on that, that, that late kickoff, but did you still see a breakdown there? Yeah, so a couple of things. Um, you know, the, the, the kickoffs are uh, a direct result of the kicks. Um, the, the kicks that have been returned um, have been line drives down the middle of the field. That is going to compromise your coverage. We don't have a chance to get off blocks and get properly covered. Um, now, uh, can we get off some blocks and, and make some plays? Absolutely. And we've got to be better there. So this is not all on the kicker. However, um, it does expose you with those types of kicks. Um, as it relates to the fielding of um, the punts, uh, we got to coach better. I mean, and I've got to be involved in that and, and, and make sure that those guys are absolutely clear in terms of they cannot move their heels, you know, past the 10 yard line. Um, you know, Greg obviously lost track of where he was. He's a young player. We've got to do a better job coaching him there. Um, the one that he tried to field, he felt like it hit one of our players. Um, look, when you're looking at it, it's it's close. But again, that goes to awareness. Um, and, and maybe we could have coached him better if he saw some Mississippi State players, you know, moving towards the ball. Maybe that's the cue that he falls on it. If he doesn't see a Mississippi State player going to it, maybe he stays away from it. And, and I think we can do a better job coaching that, too. Hey, Coach, right here. Um, how do you think the run game has been improving kind of steadily so far this year? And how impressed are you with your bags? Yeah, I, look, I mean, I, I think – I think last week we talked about, you know, run efficiency and, and, and where is that as it relates to, um, you know, week two. And I said, I, I really can't tell you until we start SEC play. Um, our run efficiency was much better when we needed to run the football. We were able to do that to close out the football game. Um, so I'm pleased with the efficiency of being able to run the ball in short yardage situations to close out games. Um, inside, you know, the the ten yard line, uh, what we call, you know, our white and blue zone. We've been effective running the football there, um, and then our backs are, are kind of what we expected. You know, they're all going to contribute in some fashion, and I think they all did. I think they all lended themselves to, um, you know, what we're doing from an offensive perspective. Um, getting Emory back uh, helped. You saw him catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, he was really good in pass protection. And I think he'll get better as he continues to get reps and he'll add to uh, the depth of that position. Ryan, um, kind of circling back to the special teams question. Uh, as you said, maybe it was uh, an effort. You know, you see, he, saw, he thought that something happened, so he's trying to jump on the ball. The player feels the, the punt, maybe trying not to let them get the good field position. Can you live with or accept errors of that involve effort? I mean, can Absolutely. you better? Yeah, as he came off and he, ex you know, my first reaction is, what are you doing, right? And as he explained his position on it, 
you know, you really can't come back with anything else other than, okay, let's, let's take a look at it on film. Maybe we can help you with that decision making in the future. Um, but he's trying to make the right play. And, and those are, those are about as gray um, as they come within special teams. Um, moving off your spot at the 10 yard line, um, that's a little bit different. Um, that, that has to be coached and, and there's gotta be more discipline in those situations. So there are gonna be some of those gray areas. Um, we, just, we just need to be better all over the place. And um, you know that falls on Brian, that falls on me. Um, we all have to do a better job then. And our players have to uh, commit themselves and understand how important special teams is. It was a it was a great play by Slade, uh, and and the hang time was was terrific. It was 4.5 plus, gave us the opportunity to write, be in position to make uh, the play necessary to, to obviously get a, a big play. Hey, coach, uh, Liam Haley from KLSU Sports here. Um, with how well Howard Perkins played as an edge rusher on Saturday, can we expect him to like see a bigger role for him, like let's say an edge rushing or blitzing in general? Yeah, I think there's a role for him. Um, certainly, he adds, you know, something to our pass rush, and you know, we we certainly saw that. That's why he, you know, got the opportunity to play out on the edge a little bit, and you saw him inside uh, with some some blitzing inside. I, I think we found a, a niche for him in terms of where he can help us, um, and and I would say that. Um, you're accurate in that he can continue to evolve into that position. Now, is he going to beat out B.J. Ojolari at that position? I, I don't think so. Um, but he certainly can lend um, some support to that position and, and certainly some dime and nickel packages. We've seen some personnel adjustments on defense, some schematic different looks. How would you assess the job Matt and his staff are doing, kind of developing this defense as the season unfolds? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the the ability to, you know, put the pieces in place, you know, moving uh, Jay down um, has obviously benefited us greatly. Uh, Greg going back uh, to the safety position has added a, uh, a communication level um, that's really benefited us greatly. I think that in itself has solidified the back end for us. We've been able to rotate in corners and, and give guys – the, the necessary rest in, in, in that end of things. So, um, and, and then we're mixing things up, you know, we're not lining up with one post safety the whole time. I mean, we're lining up and showing one post and playing too high and vice versa. So I, I think, I think schematically we're where we need to be. Um, you know, the nature of having a guy like BJ Ojolari and, and, Ali Gay, where you can play four down and three down and not change personnel is, is quite difficult sometimes. And we saw that against a very veteran and skilled offense. Quite frankly, they didn't know what they were getting from snap to snap. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jace Lejeune from Gridiron Football. I was just going to ask you about Malik Neighbors and just what, had, what can you say about his mentality uh, just from the first game coming off of you know, uh, the two ball punts against Florida State and then just actually translating that and making some huge plays for you all down the stretch uh, against Mississippi State, especially in the third and fourth downs. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think we hear this all the time and, and that he has, um, he's been able to focus and refocus. He's been able to, you know, move on to the next play. And, and that is a, a great quality to have, uh, especially in the game of football. You're Look, the, you're, you're going to have some adversity, and, and he's had it. Uh, he's dealt with it, and, and he's moved on, and he's stronger for it. Um, he's, been, he's been really good. Um, we've seen his uh, ability to make dynamic plays for us on the offensive side of the ball, and um, uh, I, I just think from that perspective, he's really grown. Coach, what was your evaluation of Brooks and Ward making that switch in the secondary? And then do you have any update on Ward after taking that little knock after the interception? Yeah, we were looking for better communication. Um, and, you know, Jay is a very active player, um, physical player. We saw that, you know, with the, the play this weekend. Um, Greg is too. But, you know, Greg is um, – veteran player that is used to playing back at that safety position and very good communicator. So it, it was just getting to know our personnel better 
and, and really plugging them in where we felt that we would be, you know, better served, whether it was, you know, on the offensive line, whether Frazier's a guard, whether he's a tackle, you know, whether Emory Jarvis is better at guard or tackle. We're just trying to get to know our personnel and, and find out what the best lineup is, and, and that was kind of, you know, what that was. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he was a little banged up, but, you know, we expect to have him uh, for this weekend. Right. Ryan, ideally, do you want Jaden Daniels to run less, or are you okay with him taking on that much of a, of a workload running the football? Yeah, I mean, I think in, in when we evaluate when he runs, um, we want to see that if, if, if it was within the progression and, um, you know, it was, it was a really good coverage or maybe that play wasn't great against this coverage um, or we got beat at the, you know, a particular position and he got flushed um, versus – uh, you turn down, you know, a potential uh, high-low read, um, and, and you took off, right? And and so that's what we're trying to evaluate, and and it's and it's really a little bit of both. I think there's still growth there where we can stay a little bit more patient and a little bit more locked in on the progression, uh, and then there are sometimes the really dynamic runs that there was just nothing there and he made something happen. So you want to be careful where you go, hey, you're running too much. And, and then when he needs to be dynamic, he's not. So we, we have to be very careful and along the way keep coaching him to really do a great job of getting through his progressions and seeing the things necessary that allows us to be balanced in both. Ryan, uh, obviously you were really high on Mason Taylor in the in the preseason. Just how would you evaluate what he's done so far? What is it kind of about him and his skill set that's allowed him to play and sort of take over that role as a freshman? I think he's very confident in his ability. So I think it starts with confidence first. I think second, um, you know, it's it's a, a pass-catching tight end, a guy that has really good hands, uh, his ability to – um, run after the catch, uh, extremely athletic. Um, so I think it's skill set, confidence, and he's put on the necessary size to, you know, go into traffic and make some plays. Um, you know, we didn't find him very well on Saturday. Um, maybe a couple of fresh mistakes. He stepped out of bounds on an arrow route where, you know, he needs to know where he is. But, you know, those, I'm, I'm okay with those. You know, that's a learning curve. And those are great opportunities to, to point out to a freshman that he's not going to make that same mistake twice. But um, I would say confidence um, and, and then just the physical attributes that he has. Hey, Coach, uh, down here. Uh, I, I was I was sort of curious as to um, how do you think John Emery sort of fared in his first game back, and how was he feeling sort of after the game after you know have not having played for over a year? He was elated after the game uh, that he actually played football uh, for the first time in a long time. He was sore, he was tired, uh, and I think he had all the feelings that he remembered uh, in playing. So I think the post was really good. Uh, he was really nervous going in. Um, but I thought he, uh, you know, afforded himself very well. Um, yeah, I, I thought he ran uh, with with pretty good vision for the for a guy that hadn't played in a while. Um, you know, I talked about rust. Uh, there was some. Um, but, um, again, I think all in all, caught the football, um, played with low pads, um, and he'll get better. So I, I thought a, a good first game for him. Coach, you have four uh, right here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> In the front. Um, you have four place kickers on your roster. Um, how have you seen, like, the recruiting landscape for kickers change over the years, and have you ever changed kickers midseason? I think I have changed kickers um, in midseason. Um, I'm not interested in changing kickers right now. Um, I, think, um, I think our kicking situation is much more technical than it is anything else. Um, we've just got to clean up some technique. Um, but, you know, we've, we've got a scholarship kicker as well. Um, we've got a transfer from Northwestern who's talented as well um, in Finison. So, um, Dybert, Finison, uh, Ramos, the, you know, uh, Peyton Todd's a really good punter. I mean, we're, we're pretty deep in kickers. You know, Bramlett obviously, you know, punted the ball very well. So, 
I, I really think that there's some great depth there. Um, but we're not going to say there's never competition at the position. If we feel like, you know, we need to make a change in a particular area, for example, we got to change kickoffs versus field goals, extra point, we'll consider all of those things for the betterment of the football team. Great. Thank you.